Netflix just released the Umbrella Academy, and we're gonna review it right here on the Miscast Academy. Oh God! Oh, oh. <laughs> Welcome back, you miscast miscreants, to another episode of Miscast Movie Reviews with your host, Greg Farrow. Just call me number eight. And you're the host, DJ Valentine. I'm 69. And this host right here, the superhero also known as William Davis Moore. Supervillain, more likely. Definitely. <laughs> Butcher of Boca, definitely a supervillain. <laughs> the Butcher of Boca. That's it. There you go. We're going back to that well. <laughs> Well, I, I'm like the horror. I got stuff horror. that comes hey, out of me uh, from horror. another dimension. The horror. <laughs> so we're reviewing uh, the Umbrella Academy, just released on Netflix. Mm-hmm. I have adopted six children, gifted with abilities far beyond the ordinary. I give you the Umbrella Academy. I jumped forward and got stuck in the future. Do you know what I found? Absolutely nothing. Look around. There's someone out there who's trying to stop me from preventing the apocalypse. We need the full force of the Academy. Bingo. We're going. Where? Save the world. Oh, is that all? We're maybe a little a week late to the party, but hey, who cares? Mm. Uh, Probably takes that long for everybody to get through it anyway. So yeah, you know. <laughs> it's, it's uh, ten episodes of madness. Uh, I, I'm I'm pretty good uh, with the ten episode lineup that Netflix has been starting. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, better than thirteen. Doesn't yeah. quite have that lull. It's got a seventy three percent on Rotten Tomatoes mm. based on fifty eight critics, mm. which I guess is pretty good considering the pacing of this series. And uh, it's got no audience score yet. Which is not surprising. Hmm. Interesting. I did not, not know that. People are still watching. People, people, are, people are loving still it though. Watching. I gotta say that I don't think it had a lot of uh, marketing. Um, not a lot of people I talk to even know it exists. Right. So. Yeah, that's unfortunate. They really should have marketed it a little harder for as good as it is. So for sure. Yeah. Netflix usually is. Uh, you're scrolling, you're scrolling, you're scrolling. Hey, what's that? That's essentially how people yeah, like <laughs> pops up like all of a sudden. Oh, that's, look, what's, what's that, that's about show? as much marketing as they can afford, really. <laughs> you got to turn that notification on in Netflix so that they can tell you like this show is next or you're never going to know. No, it's right. buried no. in that thing. Right. Hey, Greg, you want to break down? Uh, yeah. So who's let's in go this through. Shit? Let's go through it. So Umbrella Academy was created by this is something I didn't know came until I came out. It was right. created by Gerard Way, the former lead singer of My Chemical Romance. Right. Okay, he used to write this comic book while they were out on tour, and uh, it's uh, illustrated by Gabriel Ba. I used to see interviews with, um, I saw a few interviews with Gerard Way before I even know who he was, because I don't know My Chemical Romance at all. Mm-hmm. I was like, who is this This little this little tiny, pudgy looking dude here? Right. And then I find out he's a rock star. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, all right, fine. Um, anyway, so it stars Tom Hopper uh, from Game of Thrones. He played Dickon. Dickon Tarly, mm-hmm. Sam Tarly's brother in Game of Thrones. So he plays Luther Hargreaves, a.k.a. number one, a.k.a. Space Boy. Yeah, okay. Space Boy. Space Boy. An astronaut with super strength. Also stars David Castaneda as Diego Hargreaves, a.k.a. number two, a.k.a. the Kraken. The Kraken. Expert the- with the knives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Emmy Raver Lampman as Allison Hargreaves, a.k.a. number three, a.k.a. the Rumor. Mm. Nice. Okay. Also stars Robert Sheehan as Klaus Hargreaves, a.k.a. number four, a.k.a. The Seance. A.k.a. going to win an award. <laughs> yeah, he was great. You know, they, you know, before we go on, I have to yeah. say I'm, I was really disappointed that they didn't really use their nicknames very much. No. Right. At, if, if at all. Yeah. Aiden Gallagher as number five. AKA the boy. The boy. AKA another award. <laughs> AKA the AKA boy. breakout performance. Yes. Right, right. Okay. Uh, Justin H. Min as Ben Hargreaves, AKA number six, AKA the horror. Yeah. Underutilized. Mm. Uh, Ellen Page as Vanya Hargreaves, AKA number seven, AKA the white violin. The white violin. Yep. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Pretty much. So, well, yeah, this, if you're this, watching this, this is a spoiler review. Sh- for sure. Yeah. Spoiler <laughs> review. Yeah, well, Comb Fior. 
as Sir Reginald Hargreaves, a.k.a. The Monocle. Okay? A.k.a. Chronicles of Riddick, a.k.a. A. Thor, <laughs> a.k.a. <laughs> yeah, a.k.a. I loved the him prodigy. in The Chronicles of Chronicles Riddick. Chronicles of Riddick. Like, <laughs> These are his final moments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got Mary J. Blige as Cha-Cha, mm. one of the assassins. You got Cameron Britton as Hazel, Cha-Cha's partner. Uh, Hazel and Cha-Cha. Hazel oh. and Cha-Cha, they were awesome. Yes. They were awesome. And uh, yeah. John McGarrow from Overlord as uh, Leonard he? Peabody, a.k.a. Harold Jenkins. And uh, Adam Godley as Pogo. Let's start straight off the bat with, like, this production um, is, it's movie quality. Oh, uh, yeah. Not only did it take a long time to make, but they dumped a shit ton of money into this. Yeah. The effects are up on the level of Marvel, man. Oh, listen. Like, you got to go. Crazy. When you go to Pogo... First of all, Pogo is, uh, for those that you don't know, is like the chimpanzee, sentient chimpanzee, talking chimpanzee butler yes. for the Umbrella Academy. <laughs> and yeah. they got Wetted Digital to use this. Right. They did all yeah. the Planet oh, clear, of the Apes. Clearly they got Wetted Digital yeah. to use yeah. because they, they did all, the only ones that could do <laughs> shit like that. He did all like, the Planet of the Apes movies. And according to showrunner Steve Blackman, uh, it still took them, even though Wetted Digital had all the assets from from Planet of the Apes movies, right. still took them 12 weeks per shot to I, render. I sure. It. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Did you see the detail in his skin? I mean, there was no way to tell that that was not a real monkey. Yeah. Uh, not monkey, I'm sorry, chimpanzee. Right. right. I stared at it for a good long time. I mean, coming from an animation background, mm. which is pretty much where I started in the beginning, uh, I can appreciate that shit. And I'm telling you, man, the technology that went into that, you can tell is probably probably half the budget. I Total think, big I, budget movie quality. I think you guys are really I mean, they're they're talking about it, but they're under they're not really underlying the point. Umbrella Academy makes Daredevil and Jessica Jones and Luke Cage and Iron Fist look like me going, Hey, yeah. Iron Man, you wanna <laughs> it's wanna have an adventure? That's essentially yeah. the, the, yeah. the budget on that show yeah. is annoying to me yeah. at how big it is. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, Daredevil's like in one room. Yeah. And they're on the moon. There's a walking, yeah. talking chimpanzee. Right. There's a tentacle monster yep. that's, they, that's used yeah. occasionally. The horror. The horror. Yeah. There's all types of crap. And it's like, man, this takes them 18 months to shoot a show. Yeah. And then you got any other Netflix, even Doom Patrol. Which I just watched. Which the I first, have not seen yet. I watched I, the first yeah. part. It's like on a set. You can just tell it's like a, like a universal sure. set. And this thing is like, a, I would love to know the budget. Let's I, go and rival probably Game of Thrones. I would say. Well, even even just the score. The score oh. is fucking amazing. That was expensive. One of the like, expensive music. It is they so good, though. <laughs> that yeah, was yeah. one of the highlights. Let me let me run through some of these some of these things here. You had it, basically in the first two episodes alone. You had, I think we're alone now by Tiffany. Yeah. You had Run Boy Run. You had the Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> uh, you had They Might Be Giants. Yeah. Uh, Istanbul Not Constitutional. You had Radiohead. Uh, at one point in the series, you had Mary J. Blige doing a cover of Rod Stewart. Right. Uh, you had um, even music from The Shining. Yeah, in this in this, um, in this show. Well, I wasn't even so. talking about that because that is right there impressive as hell. Yeah. I was just talking about the the, the orchestra. Oh, the score right. itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Didn't, they didn't crimp on like no. Uh, they got a real <laughs> that was good movie quality, quality, quality orchestra score. Yeah. score. The only bad thing about it is that we're gonna have to wait a long time for another season just mm -hmm. to for them minimum to make minimum like 18, mm -hmm. 18 months months to do it just to get all that stuff. Uh, though, spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! You're not going to have to worry about certain characters anymore. And well, no, you might because they do time travel. Yeah. So we don't know where the hell they're going. It's going to probably be another 18 months just to even exercise this budget, which is fucking astronomical. The, yeah. the, the monocle's coming back, and um, oh, they got to go into his backstory because he's supposed to be an, he's an alien. He's well, an alien. That, you're going you're to have Pogo, which I'm this is what I'm kind of oh, yeah. alluding to. Is like you're going to have Pogo again, which again, yeah. you know, how much do you say it costs per shot? It's like uh, 12 weeks. Per, per shot, shot to render. That's not. Cheap, well, I don't. That's man, not. That's, even, I'm not even going to the cost. Well, well, here's the deal, guys. I mean, so Disney's pulling all their content from Netflix. Netflix is literally terrified right now. Right. So what they're doing is they're dumping everything, everything they've, they've got, got into right. their own shit, yeah. and this is their first spearhead for their own like daredevil kind of thing because 
once Disney pulls all their animations, you can see the writing on the wall. Mm. Um, and uh, I heard WB is starting a streaming service. Netflix yeah. is seriously in a bad it. place right now, and do they really want to shine. Do you think I season don't know. two will be as expensive as a show that literally blows up the moon? Well, <laughs> I think I that think was so this, cool. It, awesome. it, it became the most watched streaming show. Really? Oh, oh I, think of, the, okay, uh, I think of all time oh, when wow. it's happened. Or so, maybe I. Most watched streaming show maybe it did well. Um, uh, it did great. Understated. It did great, and it's got great ratings, and okay. people are loving it. So let me ask you guys this: mm-hmm. What were some of the highlights of this show for you? I'm going with Robert Sheehan, who you mentioned earlier. Close. Who I've been on his uh, case since Misfits. I don't know if anybody's seen the. I you love were gonna, you were gonna say Misfits. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> he, he's been on a whole bunch of. I think he was in Moral Engines. He was in Moral Engines, which is horrible. Yeah. But th- it's not his fault. No, I've seen Misfits, and he. If you liked him in Umbrella Academy. Misfits is like dialed up because it's it's more about. I mean, he's really good in this show. Well, I don't know how you can dial him up more no, than no, he I'm was in this show. No, no, I'm saying they used him more <laughs> right. in Misfits than they're using him in Umbrella Academy. Okay. One, of, one of my regrets is that they didn't focus on the seance more. Yeah, because you could have did a whole show about uh, seance at a time in Vietnam. I got to watch a oh, yeah. series about yeah. that. Well, yeah. he has he has a completely different power structure. In right, the right. Comics. They kind of. I mean, yeah. Space Boy is they they got rid of pretty much all the alien stuff unless they're gonna. No, yeah. No, we'll go into no, the difference, but let's let's stick to yeah, the go, show. Go ahead, Robert, go ahead. Robert Sheehan, I, I really love, and Cameron Britton, who I first heard of and saw in Man, Mind, Mindhunter, Mind which Hunter. is he. Great. He's in Barry for like five seconds, the TV show Barry on HBO, but he's really good in Mindhunter, and in this. I know you guys like Hazel and Cha-Cha, and here comes some of my reveal. I like Hazel. I do not at any point like Cha-Cha. Really? <laughs> oh, Mary J. Blige Mary is your J. miscast, Blige, yeah, your miscast yeah, character. Mary J. Blige <laughs> is great in Mudbound, and everybody loves Mary J. Blige. She's one of the greatest singers of all time, but I just, I, every time I watched wow. her in this show, I was kind of like, man, this would have been great if it was Queen Latifah. This is great if it was, hmm. you know, uh, Tessa Thompson. It's just, I, I, I never. Whoa, Tessa Thompson yeah, would have yeah. been so I, good. I just didn't. Cameron's giving really good performance. Yes, here. yes. And when she, she's, it just felt like she was reading to me. Like she was just, I never bought any of her she's emotions. She's still a novice actress. Again, I, you I know? don't 100% blame her. And it, she didn't ruin the show for me. Right. She, she was like, fine. Man, she I was just, okay. I didn't yeah, yeah. Their relationship is really good. And I think it could have been strong. Yeah. Especially during the climax of the show, if we had a more experienced actress in there okay I buy again it. it's a it's a minor it's a nitpick yeah but robert sheehan and cameron Britton are the standouts for me okay and what, what about you what were your highlights for you william uh the special effects obviously yes. the score i already brought that up uh those right there brought me into the point where i was like mesmerized i couldn't believe that 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 show had that kind of quality it just tripped me up man mm-hmm. i was like holy shit <laughs> <laughs> and uh the performances i thought for the most part were amazing what, what really freaking uh bothered me though i mean I know the, the highlight part, but the point that I didn't like was Ellen Page was dialing it in from some zoned out joint. <laughs> a little too melodramatic, yeah. kind of like. But I think that was supposed to the 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 um, point of that character and that yeah. relationship was little. Not, that was the weakest to, point. You're supposed thing. to take her. Not, you're not supposed. To, again, going in, I had done a little research because I, I kind of knew where her arc was going, mm-hmm. and I so, knew nothing. I, I see. Yeah. That, that, I'm more interested in your take because I kind of knew what they were going to do with her. So it didn't bother me as much probably as you because I knew what they're going to have to curtail a lot of her stuff because the twist of her is the big reveal Mm -hmm. of the show. But I mean, to me, I didn't, it didn't, she didn't bother me as much as certain. Well, well, here's the caveat for that because Mm -hmm. like the last two episodes, I, and I liked that she was so bland, right? It was just the whole thing time of her being bland kind of like threw me off too much yeah a little too much you know because the last two episodes i thought with her were great yeah that was, were so really those were highlight. that you was think, another you highlight think if she was more stuff. likable that twist would have hit harder they i think. should have i don't know what they should have done flesh her out a little bit more mm-hmm. uh, give her more time to emote or something because mm-hmm. she always had that same i don't know everybody else was so dynamic mm-hmm. and she just kind of rode that rail you know I, I don't know yeah I think that was just the way the character was written and uh, yeah I felt like the relationship between her and um, the dude from Overlord was like uh, probably the weakest part of the show for me but again that's nitpicky I watched the show again this weekend I just had it on right. and I liked it better the second time around than I did the first time around sure so right. um, well, number f- five is my highlight Mom, um, yes I was, that's like, what I was going to say breakout uh, performance Klaus, by Aiden Gallagher Klaus was freaking amazing like don't get me wrong he was freaking amazing mm-hmm. but 
my God, that freaking that kid. <laughs> yeah, he owned the that boy. part. The boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, dude. He he freaking owned that whole show. Yeah, it was. Like, it, yeah, it was a breakout performance or show. He'd only done a few Nickelodeon shows before yeah, this. I, I didn't recognize him. So he, he, he's really good. That was it, man. But he inhabiting he like a that dude 50... from White Castle. <laughs> You know, White Castle? I can't remember his name. Insert man. White Castle clip. Nah, nah, yeah, yeah, he's like blazing <laughs> on the couch before they leave. Like, I forget his freaking From Harold name. and Kumar? Yeah. Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Huh. David Crumholtz. Yes, that's it. That's David Crumholtz. Yeah, you got okay. it. Um, but no, Aiden Gallagher, this is a breakout role for that. He had to inhabit a 58 year old man <laughs> in a 13 year old's body. Epic. So <laughs> he was, he, yeah, time traveling, smart ass assassin. Do you know what the greatest part about it was? Mm. Like, he could have gotten any kind of freaking outfit he wanted to get, you know. <laughs> he could have put boy. a suit on. He yeah. could have done anything. You know, he's, he's 60 years old. Mm. But he wore that fucking schoolboy Well, that's uniform. all he had in his closet. They no, made a point of showing that. But not after the yeah. second day. Not after the true, second true. day. That's but, my point. Yeah, like, it's a comic book even show. When when he, right. Even when he went to work for the freaking um, time travel agency, he still wore that uniform. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. That was the, awesome. Those cute little shorts as his hand I mean, I, I remember cold. the SNL sketch where it was like Wes Anderson's X-Men. And this show feels to me like X Men through uh, Royal Tenenbaums. Is yeah, even yeah, with, uh, I can see that. Even okay. with the incestuous, super other dysfunctional, sister. and like the <laughs> the part, the fact that you have this this kid. I could have watched uh, like <clears throat> this. This show is essentially a mismatch of great ideas by themselves that could have been a show. I could have watched Vietnam Seon show. I could yeah. have definitely watched Fifty Eight Year Old Child in a Time Bureau show. Yeah. yeah, I could have watched Time Bureau Assassin show. I could have watched Child Superhero show. Yeah, and they're kind of all kind of mixed in. Bunch together. of really <laughs> great ideas. <laughs> really great really, ideas. Yeah. Good job, Mixing Way. Good job, <laughs> job Way. Um, but yeah, so this kid Gallagher though, he's kind of like a. Renaissance. I mean, he plays a lot of music. He's got his own YouTube. Oh, he plays wow. a lot of music. He's the youngest ever UN Environment Goodwill Ambassador. What? So <laughs> he look, ever. he's like yeah, a, a, an old. adult in a kid's body. Yeah, he's a year old man in his body. <laughs> exactly. real. So he's kind of like he's kind of like this old soul, and so he really embodied the part. Um, but between between number five and Klaus, yeah. When they were together, yeah. When they were at that um uh, the prosthetic yes. thing that yeah. that uh, that was the bike club scene where oh that was smash your head. Awesome. Oh, world peace <laughs> that was so fucking great club, man. great 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 <laughs> great homage great man. Um, and then I have to go. I wanted I want to mention the uh, the Tiffany dance. I think we're alone now in the first episode where they panned out and showed. Everybody the dollhouse. That was the it Wes Anderson moment for me. Exactly, yeah. that and that's where I was. Yeah. That's, that's where they I turned the house into a dollhouse. Yeah. But that basically. was such a great, great shot. I think we're alone now. Alone now. Alone now. It's it's the only and it, it showed how you know, even though their family, it kind of like spoke volumes how they're all separated from each other at that point, mm. and uh, but they're all back but they're together. all connected. Right. All right. So William, let me ask you this. What was uh? We already touched on uh, uh, a couple of things, but what are what some nitpicky things for you? Well, I kind of already went into my nitpicky area. Um, I didn't have a lot. The, the, I, I guess to, to say what else really bothered me a l just maybe really is a strong word a little bit. Uh, the lulls. Mm. There were a lot of places where the pacing kind of fell apart, um, where it got a little bit too slow for too long. Um, I enjoyed that when it worked, I guess, but they kept doing it in a lot of episodes and there were a lot of points where I was like, all right, guys, come on, like, just, just cut it. Like, I know you're trying to make 45 minutes or 50 minutes or whatever mm -hmm. the hell the runtime is, mm -hmm. but if you, if you can't do, I would rather you just gave me a 30 minute show than stretch that shit out and give me all this filler. I, I, that's my downside about every fucking TV program, though. Uh, yeah, it seems like it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it could have been sixty. They could have been sixty-minute episodes, which I'm glad they yeah. kind of didn't do because of that reason. For that reason, I, I would rather since we're doing this whole like new field of like binging and you're getting what you want and there's no real censorship. Uh, I would rather that they just you know abandon the time frame too. Make a story as long as the story exactly needs to be. exactly. Right. Like, Mr. Robot in a Game of Thrones kind of plays with that because sometimes there'll be episodes that are really long and sometimes right. there'll be episodes next week that are shorter and stuff like that. I so, would rather right. have that with a really compelling storyline than... I, I absolutely hate filler mm. in, in anything. Yeah. I hate filler episodes too where they try and make a certain number of episodes and then one or two episodes is CW, like... CW, Arrowverse. Yeah, I cannot yes. stand that. 100%. Like if you're that's, gonna, why I, that's why I stopped watching that show. Either make it episodic, the whole damn series, or 
or if you're going to do an overlying arc over the whole freaking season, then uh, you can't have filler episodes. Yeah. They're they're pointless. And well, I didn't feel like I I didn't feel like there were any complete filler episodes. There were some filler moments in episodes, but not uh, complete. I didn't. At least I didn't was, feel that way. There was one that was pretty, pretty close well to a me. filler okay. episode. I mean, uh, I know the whole relationship with uh, him and with Luther and Allison is like everybody's big go-to moment mm. but it's incest i don't care what anybody it was says. a little weird man that's why i was gonna bring so that up Will Tenenbaums, luke hey. and uh gwyneth paltrow luke yeah. wilson and gwyneth paltrow same kind of thing so sure well, sure i mean there, a whole it's a dysfunction episode. it fits a dysfunctional family thing but clueless alicia still babies. silverstone and paul rudd they were brother and sister where they end up together at the end it, so unless you imagine that weird. as an orphanage Ooh. uh there's no other way to think yeah. of it. But they were raised. They call, keep calling each other brothers they, and sisters. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't call your sister. Yeah. Right. Well, for me, I have to say that there was... But um, that's a little... My, my shit is... Yeah, really my, my, right. my nitpicks are very minor as well, too. I thought that there was some uh, derivative stuff that we've seen in other episodes. I mean, listen, it's a take. It's a spinoff of X-Men. You can't really, right. can't really get away sure. from that one. But, I mean, yeah, the Don't Stop Me Now from Shaun of the Dead, that's like, yeah, it kind of took me out of that episode. It was at episode two, mm. where they were shooting up the uh, department store at five, uh, right. Cha Cha and Hazel. Oh, um, you didn't like that? No, I liked, I, listen, the scene was great. Yeah. Uh, but the, the, the choice of song music, choice, yeah. the song uh, choice kind of took me off because I made me think of, the, uh, of, another, of something else, you know? Right. Um, but Hazel and Cha Cha's masks. Were, were pretty awesome, I have to say. I, they I like were that. Freaking great. I like that image of them with the black suits and the, the cartoonish, cartoonish masks. Yeah, man. Um, another derivative thing was uh, going back to Hazel and Chacha was Hazel using the cattle gun a la Anton Sugar. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. to yeah, punch out a, the lock to the Umbrella yeah. Academy. Luther's fake muscles at points looked like foam. That's like he was just the, wearing. That's where the budget used. Yeah, that's where it took a little dip. Grease. I mean, listen, in the comics, he's supposed to have a full head transplant onto a gorilla's sure. body. An alien gorilla. A, a Martian gorilla. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, okay, I'm glad they changed that because right. that would have been maybe a little too ridiculous. I, I'm on the other side of that. I really would rather have seen like that head transplant yeah. like because that was cool. And that would be even more of a... Look what father did to you. That's like, you're yeah. Not even, are you even you anymore? Right. Yeah, because right More now of a I'm horror thinking, kind of right, thing. Right. right now I'm thinking, well, he's still got the superpowers. He's just got like ape DNA. Mm -hmm. Like then it would have been like, dude, you literally don't have your yeah. ability. Like that ape is now your new ability. Right. I'd be, very, I'd be very close to Doom Patrol. Maybe that's why they did it because Doom Patrol, um, Brendan Fraser's character is just a brain in a robot's body. Right, yeah. right, right, so right. So it might be the same issues that they'd be working around. So, yeah, this well, I kind of wish. I also kind of wish, like, like I said, at points like the fake muscles look really, really fake. You yeah. know, um, and also it was kind of weird seeing his like skinny legs. <laughs> so I kind of wish they'd filled it out a little bit more of a suit, like all the way down. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyway, uh, that, like not, I said, I'm real nitpick. I'm being real nitpicky with that. I'm stuff. not sure it's an issue with budget, though. I just think that that's an issue with whoever designed that suit. Yeah. I mean, so hopefully in uh, season two, maybe they'll upgrade that a little bit. Um, I'm also hoping in season two you see. More of Reginald Hargreaves' backstory, mm -hmm. more of the alien stuff. They touched on more it. More of and the horror. Yeah, yeah. That that was like that was pretty cool. All the people Those leaving all, the planet. Yeah, and all stuff. the spaceships yeah. taken off. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see more of the horror because I thought that was one of the cooler characters. Right. You know, Ben Hargreaves. Yeah. And but, also how going to how he died because that's not touched on. I don't even think it's touched on in the comics. No, it, it, it's still not known. It's yeah. Not known? Okay, because yeah, I, I was, was going to look it up. I was like, how did no. he die in the comics? There, there is no uh, no story. Oh, it's wow, just okay. uh, everybody blames Luther, but the show run, runners have said that um, that in the show, it's a little bit of everybody had a, something to do with that. Oh, so, okay. okay. All right. Okay. I love this show and yeah. I highly recommend everybody go watch it. Yeah. You know, um, if you haven't already, binge it. Binge it twice like I did. If, so. if you haven't watched it already and you're watching this, you're a fucking idiot. So. <laughs> Give them the No, advice. no, you're very smart for watching this. Very smart for Somewhere watching this. Somebody from Netflix is watching this going, yes. <laughs> I love oh, watching spoilers <laughs> before I watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> Damn fools. You damn fool! <laughs> <laughs> I'm more of the like it than love it, but it's uh, compared to other comic book shows we have out there right now. Sure. It's in the upper echelon. Oh, for stuff. sure. Especially with that with the budget. Holy crap! Oh, the, the last episode alone. I'm budget. still jealous of the budget. I just want to say that that freaking moon. Yeah. Scene. <laughs> that was like <laughs> really? so cool. I, man. I, I, see, I, you were amazed. I was like, really? They blew up the moon. 
I can't get Daredevil to get the a scene that that's nowhere in his apartment. But I got a moon exploding right. and a roller academy. Do you watch that whole part just like hit the side of yeah, the earth? I'm, I'm like, like did you see the atmosphere like wrap around? Oh it? man, it they was so detailed. Me watching cool, that last man. year was like, oh, it's not fair. <laughs> Matt Murdock, it's not fair. It's not fair. I only get buried under skyscrapers. That's all I get. That's all I, get. <laughs> I get. I get long. Uh, no one take. I wear scene. my costume four times, three, four. I don't even know what number it is anymore. I'm not even allowed to look people in the eye. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> all right. right, guys, that's gonna do it for this episode. Uh, I hope you guys dug it because we dig everything. Sure, we sure. Yeah. So get your uh, domino masks out and uh, head on over to MissCastEntertainment.com and buy some of our damn merch. Uh, I'll put some cool shirts on there that are uh, Umbrella Academy uh, related. Oh. How about Ooh, that? Ooh, let's do it. What? Check we'll back. We'll call Parasol Academy. Par- the oh, Parasol sure. Academy. <laughs> <laughs> check back in a couple of days, and I'll even chuck a promo code in the description. Oh, you bum, lucky bum, bastards. Bum. <laughs> All right, y'all. You know the drill. Hit that subscribe button if you dig our content. And if you like hitting subscribe buttons, ring that there little bell so that you get notified of our content. And until the next time, peace. I think we're alone now. Doesn't seem to be any water. <laughs> 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 always goes Pulp Fiction. Uh. Every time, he always goes Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Tom Hopper, what's this? I want to know what this is. Netflix's Umbrella Academy just released, and now we're going to review it right now in the Miscast Academy. Oh, do you know how much bad luck that is? <laughs> Are you crazy? Just call me Mary Poppins. She's a witch, man. She's not even real. He's so pretty. Oh, so pretty. That's West Side Story. Does anybody know musicals here? <laughs> is it West Side Story? I think it's West Side Story. It's Fiddler on the fucking roof. I feel pretty is West Side Story. <laughs> I'm going to say a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine. Go. We don't know our movies around here. I've noticed. I've noticed. This shit's going to be at the end. It's going to cut it the fucking <laughs> umbrella. <laughs> Want to do one more take us in case? Yeah, let's do it again.